Hey, so tonight I'm gonna show you how to assemble a 48 volt, volt battery uh, from start to finish, including wiring everything in series and then hooking up the BMS. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna need, safety. <clears throat> that means glasses, gloves, and remove any jewelry you have before you get started. Okay, sounds good. All right, so let's wire this in series. Remember in series, what we wanna do is take one cell. Let's say this is our first cell and we wanna connect the positive of that cell to the negative of the next cell. Or if you wanted to start reverse, you could do the negative of the cell and connect to the positive of the next cell, right? So each cell is connected to the, the cell to its left in only one way and to its right in only one way. And what we're gonna do is snake the electrical current through the entire battery, connecting these all in series, 16 cells. And since we're dealing with lithium iron, <clears throat> that's, uh, sorry, lithium, lithium iron phosphate, that should take us to a roughly, that's a nominal 48 volt battery, okay? So this is gonna be my main cell negative right here. This is gonna be my main cell positive, right? So these we are, we leave alone. We don't wire these up. These are what actually get wired directly to our 48 volt inverter. This is gonna be the negative for the inverter. This will be the positive. These are what, everything else is what has to get wired up. Important thing to remember when you're gonna do these stacked like this, just uh, alternate black, white, 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 okay? You wanna make sure they're uh, totally alternating. If they're not alternating, they're not gonna be in series the way we're wiring them, okay? So this is my main cell negative. That means this has to, this positive is gonna be have to be wired to this negative. So we'll just do that, okay? And then the next step is that this positive has to be wired to that negative. Pretty easy, okay? And this pattern is just gonna continue. We're literally just gonna go around like this, snaking, alternating back and forth, right? We go positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. Here, I've got a custom bus bar because this distance is a little longer. Positive to negative. So this is bridging the two sides, right? We're going, this is all going this way. Electricity is going like this. And then it's going from here to here. Okay, but we have to continue the exact same trend. Positive to negative positive to negative, right? Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and our last but not least, positive to negative. Okay, I hope that's pretty clear. It's not too complicated to wire these, um, to wire this up. Um, because these aren't tied down yet, you probably wouldn't, This, if you put a voltmeter here, you're not gonna get 48 volts because these really need to be screwed down with nuts in order for them to, um, you know, actually for this battery to deliver 48 volts. But this is a nominal 48 volt battery now. The next step is for us to you, to wire up for a BMS, right? So this is our cable for our BMS. I've uh, pre-attached all of these ring terminals to the end of it. Uh, and a BMS can be a little intimidating. It certainly was for me at first. How am I gonna wire this many wires, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually a simple 16S BMS. Uh, it's actually really simple. You start with the black wire. There's almost always a black wire or a, a wire that's gonna be labeled battery negative. Connect the battery negative to the main negative terminal. So in this case, remember, this is negative. This is positive. The blacks are positive. This is my main cell negative, right? So the black wire goes in the main cell negative, okay? Next, take the first wire after the black wire. This is your first cell positive. So take this and string that on the first cell positive. I know it's just out of sight, but you can see it there. Okay, pretty straightforward, not too bad. Let's do the third one. That's just the next wire, the third wire. Okay, and that's gonna go on second cell positive. And it just goes like this in order, right? Uh, next, we'll take the fourth wire. We'll make sure to string it on. We'll put it on fourth cell positive. Okay? And then fifth cell. And then sixth cell. And then seventh cell. And then eighth cell. And then ninth cell. And then tenth cell. Make sure to not skip that one in the corner. And then eleventh cell. Oops. And then twelfth cell. And finally, the last one, 
<clears throat> should always have, oh, that came off. That's not so good. Uh, the last cell should always be <clears throat> main cell positive. And that's what I have one left over. And that finally goes on main cell positive. Okay. So um, you're going to want to check what, we're, what we've done with the volt meter. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But visually inspecting it, obviously you should be checking for, <clears throat> you should be checking first that every single positive terminal has a ring terminal on it. Go through and check every single positive terminal. They all have a ring terminal on them, okay? Obviously, they should be in the correct order, but we can use our voltmeter to check the order. But before we do that, <clears throat> if you check your voltmeter right now, these ring terminals are on there, but they're not on there that well. Before we go on there, what we're going to do is tie down our nuts, and that's going to go a long way towards making sure that when we check the voltages on here, that they're actually reflecting what's going on what's going on there because as they are right now they're just a little they're too loose they're not going to convey electricity carefully you want to go in and tie down all your nuts so that's what i'm going to do okay so we've tied down all the nuts and the next thing for us to do is to go in and check to see that we actually wired this bms completely correctly so uh, that actually entails just going in here and uh checking each one of these and make sure that they go up by increment increments of three. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so in order to do this, I have my black cable from my voltmeter connected to the very first um, wire here. Um, and that's the black, the, 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 the main terminal negative, right? So if I connect this to the second one, that's gonna show me the voltage of the very first cell, right? When I, when I connect to the third, that's gonna show me the first two cells in series. What I want to see is this is going up by the, the voltage of each cell, which is about 3.35, right? Or whatever, what's the voltage? Yeah, 3.35, right? So first cell, if I touch the first wire, I go up for one cell. Next cell, okay, uh, uh, 6.68. Now that's two cells. Third shell, third one should be three cells in series. Great. Four cells should be 14-ish, perfect, or 13. 16-ish, uh, perfect. 19, 20, 20, perfect. Um, 23, perfect. 26, perfect. 30, perfect. 33.4 perfect, 36 perfect, 40 perfect, 43 perfect, and up. Oh, am I getting a connection there? Saw it for a second. So we're here. No, looks like I lost my black negative. Oops, let's make sure. Over here, over down here. 36, 40, sorry, 40, 43, 46, 50, and 53. Right? So now we've gone through and we've checked every single one in order. I will admit this is by far the most tedious part in terms of hand dexterity, but now we know that I've absolutely wired this correctly. This is the most important thing you can do when you're gonna wire your BMS because if you don't do this correctly, you could easily break your BMS. Um, and when we see how this works, the logic of how BMS works is pretty straightforward, right? With this, with the black, with the, with the main terminal negative and with the first cell, it can measure the voltage of the first cell, right? When you have, when it looks at this third wire, this red wire and the black, it can see the voltage of the two cells, but it can also subtract out the voltage of the first cell. It can say, okay, I know what the voltage of the first cell using these are. So the marginal increase between this third wire and these two cells, that's the, vol that's the voltage of the second cell and the third cell and so on, so, and so on and so forth. So this is what allows the BMS to see the voltage of every individual cell and to shut down your battery, basically stop power going in or out when the voltage gets too high or too low on any one individual cell. Okay, so don't get this wrong. It's really tedious and annoying, but wire it up, wire it up carefully, and then be sure to check. Okay, everyone. So this is my BMS. It's the Dolly Smart BMS. It gets 250 amps. It's 16S. Uh, it's a big, bad BMS. I can't give you a strong endorsement review because I haven't really put it through its paces. I've only used it a little. One thing I can tell you is it comes with a temp temperature probe. Make sure you put the temperature probe in. I tried wigging this up without the temperature probe and it wouldn't start on me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is now that we're absolutely certain that we've wired this correctly, we can go ahead and connect this to the back of the battery. So let's get this, uh, the BMS. So let's get this in there. Okay, so now it's hooked up. And what we're gonna wanna do, ooh, man, the wires on this are really constraining me. Um, hold on, I'm gonna try to figure a way to secure this. Okay, so I've secured this in a very temporary and rudimentary way, but uh, I'm just doing a dry run of my battery tonight before I actually uh, load it up. So I just wanted to load up the battery, configure the BMS, configure my inverter. So this is all just gonna be used for the next hour or so. So I've just rigged up a temporary way to hold my BMS in place. The back wires are wired in. The other thing my BMS has, it has a smart screen and I, you know, sprung the extra 30 bucks so I could look at it. And uh, here's the smart screen. 
Uh, what's really cool is you can, you know, without even bothering with Bluetooth, you can go in and see all the things associated with your with your uh, BMS, and it's totally touch sensitive. So, whoops, going right here, right? We can see the cell voltages of every single cell. Um, one of the things interesting is I think it's reading all the cells, I'd say about five millivolts too low, um, which is totally fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's something you do want to keep track of though. So it's telling me the voltages of every single cell, which is really cool. You can see they're all super duper close to each other. Um, and here's all my parameters that I can set. Okay, it knows that I'm dealing with LiPo 4. Um, and there's all sorts of other things that I'll configure at another time. Um, and we have the total, the voltage right there and the number of batteries, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Super cool. Um, I think this is useful because let's say, you know, you can't get your BMS to work. And when you get these more advanced, larger BMSs, sometimes you, you hook them up and it's hard to get them working. If you have something that you can just plug in and actually see, uh, this gives me a lot of reassurance that I'm like the battery, that the BMS is working right now. If you're just relying on hooking connecting with Bluetooth and you can't hook, hook things up, um, then maybe you don't know if it's a Bluetooth problem or a BMS problem. Now I know if I have a, BM, uh, a Bluetooth problem, it's the BMS that's, uh, it's the Bluetooth that's the problem. The BMS seems to be working. Okay, the other thing to do um, to finalize this is that we have to figure out a way, we, uh, not figure out a way, we actually have to connect the battery negative to the battery negative. Okay, now just in case there's any sort of risk of spark, I'm gonna just briefly connect these two things. There shouldn't be any risk of spark, but you never know. I don't think BMS has ever sparked, but just in case, I'm gonna connect that there. Okay, actually. Different BMS manufacturers recommend uh, different orders. Um, I think you almost always put the back ribbon in the back. So what I'm talking about is this ribbon of all the wires we did before. You almost always do that before you do the battery negative, but um, the main battery negative, but I've seen all sorts of different things with respect to that. So please read the instruction with respect to your BMS in terms of the order with which you're supposed to connect things. Um, read those very carefully because you will break your BMS. So whatever BMS you have, no matter what, uh, make sure to, um, to double test that. Okay, so we have a hooked up BMS. Let's... Uh, our last step is we take the battery negative from the B from the BMS, um, or in this case it's called the P negative, and we compare that with the positive of the battery and make sure that we're getting the voltage that we are supposed to be getting, in this case, 53.4, according to the BMS. Uh, this is negative here. And this terminal, whoop, this terminal should be giving us positive. And I'm reading 53.4 on my voltmeter. So yeah, we're done. We have a fully hooked up battery. This thing is ready to go. It's online, everything's working, okay? So just to zoom out a little bit so everyone can see, this is the full battery. This is a temporary setup, make sure things are secure. In your case, I wouldn't want this wire going over a terminal. Um, I'd wanna secure my BMS, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're curious about the wiring, if you want some, so, to see someone walk through a BMS, that's what I'm trying to show you today, how to wire up a 16S BMS. So please like or subscribe or any comments below. I'd really appreciate it.